welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Malusi Gigaba delivered a 2018 budget that included tax hikes and spending cuts. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the key highlights. Hi Terence. Hi for now. The Minister was burdened by a difficult fiscal balancing act as well as concerns over his personal credibility. How did he navigate this? Yeah, this was a, a very big issue. In fact, we saw the economic freedom fighters didn't come into the, to Parliament, into the, the Chamber, saying that um, Malusi Gagaba just doesn't have the credibility that a finance minister ha needs to have to deliver this budget. And then we had questions straight away or a point of uh, order coming from the Democratic Alliance, the official opposition, pointing out um, that, you know, um, Minister Gagaba's got issues not only around the state capture allegations, but also more recent ones that are linked, I suppose, that def definitely linked to the state capture, but around the Fireblade uh, judgment that came around the private terminal at Aratumbo, which uh, the judge made some very hard remarks against the minister, almost to the point where the, the, minister, the minister was thought to be in breach of his constitutional obligations. So the credibility overhang, or the lack of credibility, did overhang this budget. And this was obviously going to be a big issue. As we know, we had uh, the, the president of the country last week, uh, Jacob Zuma, resigning under duress. Then there was the sort of rock star moment in parliament of the new president, Cyril Ramaphosa. And I think if it weren't for the halo effect of that moment, and, and again, the, state, the response to the state of the nation, where I think uh, there's a willingness to reach out across the aisle and a willingness from the opposition to also lend a hand at the moment or be open to the Cyril Ramaphosa presidency, I think it would have been very difficult for Gigaba to proceed. But in the end, he did proceed and uh, he had to navigate through that, uh, those, that very difficult uh, period in Parliament and then had to get into the really tough uh, budget uh, that was announced as well that, had, uh, that it comes against the backdrop of, you know, we've had this weak growth for many years. We have this slipping fiscal deficit um, that, uh, that has really become a major problem. We've got this rising debt, and then we had these new obligations in the form of um, fee-free uh, fee higher education. So a very, very difficult time, both on the personal front and on the fiscal front. What measures were taken to fill the fiscal hole the country finds itself in? Well, it was a combination, as everyone thought it would be, of tax hikes and spending cuts. And the tax hikes, which to collectively come to about 36 uh, billion rand for this year. The headline there is the increase of one percentage point in the VAT rate. Uh, so value added tax will go up to 15%. This is a dramatic development in the history of South Africa and the history of dem democratic South Africa. This was a tax that was in introduced right at the dying days of apartheid. It was heavily resisted by the labor movements at the time as well as the mass democratic movement as a whole seen as an unfair punitive tax on the poor. So that is that it still uh, taints this tax. Uh, even though there was a feeling that VAT was going to rise, there's a lot of societal resistance to VAT. Uh, and I think uh, you know that was the big ticket item in the budget. There were some other obvious ones, as well as the, um, the, the general sin taxes, the fuel levies, those have all gone up. And then there were some announcements on the side around uh, beverage, sugar beverage tax, which hasn't been implemented yet, as well as the carbon tax, which are on the way. So definitely some tax action, also some taxes on, on wealth. Um, uh, so, so definitely that was a, an element, a strong theme within the budget, the higher taxes. And on the other side was the, the spending cuts, which I think are also going to take a bit of time to digest. Um, uh, th I think there's generally a feeling that government's inefficient and spending's not good. And I think uh, there will be a bit of a focus on what has been cut and whether this is going to be hurtful to the most vulnerable or not in society. Um, but I think the, what was strongly indicated is things like uh, education and then social uh, welfare. Those two elements have not been cut. So to, to say that uh, there is this regressive element coming in the form of VAT, but there's the progressive element of keeping social welfare grants or payments uh, above inflation rates in terms of the, the growth. And then these, these big upticks, especially on the f higher education front, in terms of uh, spending on education. Other hot-button issues included nuclear and state-owned companies. How are these resolved? 
Yes, I think apart from the fee-free higher education and how that was going to be funded, those were those were very important issues. And on that fee-free issue, you know, we, we're looking at 57 billion over the next three years that, have, that, that has had to be found basically since December in a very, very difficult environment. As I was saying, in, in an environment of rising debt, rising deficit, and at that stage, not a lot of visibility on the revenue front, whether we'd be able to raise a tax. So, you know, I think these are the other hot topics and. I think, again, Malusi Gigaba held the line that came out very much from the then Deputy President, now President Cyril Raposa at Davos, says that uh, nuclear is not affordable at this stage and for the foreseeable future we won't be pursuing a nuclear program. And then gave quite a lot of emphasis uh, to the issue of um, <coughs> state-owned company reform and cleanup and having a much more pragmatic, practical type approach to the fact that these companies are in a lot of difficulty. Now, uh, in the past, the, uh, the remedy there was always just to bail out. I think we've reached the limit, given what the state of our, um, our finances. So the, the government just doesn't have the money to bail out companies like uh, Eskom or SAA anymore. Um, and we saw that in the, in the form of a, a deficit that now rises to 4.3% of GDP, uh, uh, you know, tax, uh, a debt burden that is now over 50%. Um, of GDP, it's really these are high figures, and we're having to try and claw those back. And as going forward to the sort of 20, 2021 20, type uh, period, we're seeing a decline in both the deficit and we're seeing a peaking in the debt. So those were important signals that had to come out, and therefore state-owned enterprises, which don't only pose a direct risk in terms of uh, having to be bailed out, but an indirect and and, and therefore ultimately a direct risk in terms of contingent liabilities. These are very large uh, uh, liabilities. These are, go these are go government guarantees that have been extended <laughs> to the state-owned companies to allow them to raise debt. And these run into the multiple billions, I think around 400 billion rand um, uh, of exposure for the government should there be a default and, and uh, government is called on to, to cover, say for instance, Eskom's debt or SAA's debt or other people's debt. So these, these are very, uh, these are very important things that can't be allowed to slip. So there's this focus picking up from the Surah Raposa point that we have to reform these state on enterprise. We have to get credible boards and governance. There's going to be a new governance structure in the form of a coordinating council be, to be chaired by the president. It's going to be interesting to see how that's going to work. It sounds like there's going to be a new sort of governance framework uh, that's, that's also going to be put in place for all uh, the boards of state on enterprises which will limit the amount of board activity around things like procurement. But uh, we need to see action and action urgently in this area uh, because it's become, uh, in fact, it was listed as the risk, these contingent liabilities as, a, as the risk, other than the yet to, yet to be completed wage negotiations with public servants for whether this budget of 2018 can be credibly kept in balance in the way it's been presented. Those are, are two very key risks. So yes, hot button topics, and I think we haven't seen the end yet, and, but we're gonna need to see a lot more action and a lot more urgency. Do you think we'll be able to avoid further downgrades? I think that's uh, unclear at this stage. I mean, we've already gone into sub-investment grade from a couple of the rating agencies. We're waiting for the Moody's one. I think the whole new sort of uh, dawn that's be, uh, and the, 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 the new entry of uh, Sura Raposa does change the dyma dynamic. There seems to be a feeling of, of letting, giving South Africa a chance. I think this budget does help in terms of showing that the roadmap ahead is not just one of slippage. Although we have you know, declined in terms of the def deficit really badly uh, from where we were hoping to be, say a year ago, February 2017, we were talking about a deficit of 3.1%. We're now talking about a deficit of 4.3% for this year. So it's, it's quite dramatic slippage. Um, and uh, on paper, we're still at risk, I think. But I think it's not only on paper, I think they look, rating agencies look forward. And looking forward, there are a lot of actions being taken, not least this budget, in terms of the, the tough decision to raise uh, VAT. I mean, this is the first time since 1993, that's before the democratic era, that, uh, that we've seen a VAT uh, r um, hike in the rate. So it's a significant, tough action, difficult one to make. So I think there will be some sympathy from the rating agency, but I think even more sympathy for the, uh, for the 
the, the new wind that's blowing through with the Silver Ramaphosa. And the promise of more pragmatism and uh, investor friendly, for instance, around the state owned companies, not just looking to bailouts, but looking to, for instance, asset sales uh, and uh, strategic equity partners and public private partnerships. Those are all important signals, I think, that are being let out. And, uh, and they're also important, I think, for fiscal credibility, because I don't think we can be at the limit. So we have to look elsewhere. And we heard today that, for instance, that um, there's a property portfolio of 195,000 properties that are, could be valued at around 40 billion rand, which government is now looking to sort of, over time, uh, you know, get value from those properties through sales. And that's the sort of, I think, different type of thinking, looking for new sources of revenue and, and just inspiring more confidence for the investor and for the business community, which might also influence the rating agency. So if you were to ask me to give you a yes or no question, I don't think we will be downgraded after this. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.